from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, April 17th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. Uh, even though I'm not covering Fiesta Fiesta tomorrow, I'm already excited about the whole event and the whole week. We are. We're planning some uh, nice bright outfits tomorrow to kick off the morning show. But this morning, one of the things we're talking about is a little bit of fog, a little bit of mist, depending on where you are. And a couple of showers out there. Uh, let me just kind of, when we're talking about Fiesta Fiesta, it's looking more encouraging. for tomorrow. Good. We'll talk Good. more about that and coming up as well. But yeah, first of all, you know, yesterday in the morning, that mist and drizzle and everything, and that's what we got her hanging around here as well. 73 degrees. Once again, like yesterday, 15 degrees above normal, but that bottom number there, dew point has gone up. So it is even more humid when you step outside. That's on the verge of being sort of that wet towel kind of humidity. 85 high temperature today. We didn't make it up to 80 despite all of that mist in those clouds that, that hung in there yesterday. The aquifer took another big hit down seven tenths of a foot. Boy, we could use some rain. We do have some decent rain in the forecast, so keep your fingers crossed for that. Mold is on the moderate side. Everything else did drop down throughout the day. We do have a couple of showers, like I said, picking up, being picked up, pardon me, on radar right now. A lot of that down to the southeast, this is the radar out of Corpus Christi. A lot of this is just uh, some clutter right in there, but just these few little light showers that are being picked up. So we'll keep some of these around here over the next few hours. The mist, like we said, the fog, three quarters of a mile visibility right now. Bernie stage down to half mile at Castorville. These numbers have just in the past hour have started to drop down. So more fog is showing up than what, even what we had yesterday. Mile and three quarters Gonzalez Randolph right now at two and three quarters mile visibility. So obviously this is going to be sticking around. It's going to get thicker at times as we approach sunrise. Hardly any 60s on the map right now. I know a lot of uh, areas aren't reporting, but yeah, it is even warmer than what it was yesterday. And like I said, all around these dew points have continued to go up. So throughout the day, 76 at noon, 85 high temperature. Yeah, mist, a little bit of fog, a couple of these sprinkles this morning. Limited sunshine around here and very humid. We will take a look ahead to tomorrow. Very encouraging. I mean, still going to be hot and humid, but as far as the rain chances and all that, well, that's looking much more promising. Good rain chances over the weekend and still looking great for the uh, river parade. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority, Mr. Marquez. Good morning, sir. Good What's morning, Mike. Yeah, and uh, you were talking about the humidity. I was walking out there yesterday by the Blue Star area and it was definitely sticky out there. So uh, seeing a little bit of that this morning, especially some of that fog out there in our areas. We take a look there at 37 Alamo Dome Tower of the Americas. Uh, you can't really see it back there, but it is definitely back there. As we take a look here at 37 Loop 1604, we saw some flashing lights a little bit earlier. We'll talk about that uh, as we get through our five o'clock hour. We have a stalled vehicle be reported Loop 410 northbound at uh, I-35. This is going to be for all of our folks coming in from the Palo Alto area, not causing too many delays right now. Uh, we do have vehicle fire being reported all the way out to on the far east side. This is going to be I-10 westbound, the frontage road though, right there at FM 1518. So we're still seeing traffic get through this area there. And I'm checking in with TransGuide, uh, the folks over there to see if we get a little bit more information as we make our way through the rest of our morning. Uh, southbound construction here at 35, the northeast expansion. Uh, this has kind of been going back and forth. Just saw a little bit of delays here, but uh, what we do know is that through 6 a.m., we will have two main lanes blocked there all the way from Pat Booker Road down to Judson Road. So basically the top wine exit uh, is closed right now at the moment. Also, if you're heading out southbound right now on 35 from the Live Oak and the Forum areas, we take a look at our citywide map and you see that for the most part, uh, no major incidents, no major delays. But again, I did just see some of those flashing lights a little bit earlier, so I'll check on that, give you more updates as we get them. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, sir. New this morning, San Antonio police say a woman was shot and killed on the far southeast side overnight. It happened around 1.30 in the 5600 block of Espada Cliff. Police say a woman was found shot dead in the garage of a home. They say the man in his 30s also had a gunshot wound and was taken to the hospital in critical condition. Investigators say they think the suspect was on foot after finding bullet casings in the grass. No suspect information was provided. And San Antonio police are looking for a suspect who they say shot another man multiple times in the chest. This happened near Austin and Chestnut Streets in the downtown area last night. Witnesses tell us that a man chased another man and then shot him. Investigators say both the shooter and the victim are in their mid-30s. And at this point, it is not clear how they knew each other. The victim is in critical condition. 
Closing arguments in the case involving Miranda Casares are set for later this morning. If found guilty, she faces life in prison following the death of Benjamin Cervetta. Cervetta died in August of 2021 from what the medical examiner has ruled as starvation. Casares was the little boy's stepmom. In a statement to the jury yesterday, Cervetta's step-grandmother described, described him as happy and a healthy little boy. The defendant's mother took the stand and described the relationship between her daughter and step-grandson. Did you ever see your daughter treat Brandon or Benjamin in a bad way? Did you ever see your daughter withhold food from Benji or Brandon Jr.? No. Meanwhile, prosecutors yesterday brought up text messages Alice Casares sent to her daughter that contradict what she told the jury. There's a lot of extra information on this case available right now at KSAT.com. Multiple drive-by shootings on the same street in a week have residents there on the west side fearing the worst. Those who live off of Prescott Drive say they are concerned and they are afraid to show their faces on camera. San Antonio Police Department said a single home is being targeted. They said the victim received a threat through a text message from an unknown number back on April 6th. And then they were called for shootings on April 7th, April 9th and April 14th. Officers tell us that they had found at least 23 shell casings at the targeted home. If they keep coming back, they still haven't found whatever they're looking for. And it's it's a danger to us. The houses are close together and you don't know if it's going to ricochet and hit somebody else's house and go through a window. Now, police have not been able to identify the suspect or suspect vehicle through the homeowner security cameras. Residents case that spoke with said that they are taking measures to help investigators and better protect themselves. The first seven jurors for Donald Trump's hush money trial have been chosen. That's after lawyers grilled members of the jury pool about their social media posts, political views and personal lives. 11 more people still need to be picked before opening statements begin as early as next week. The Manhattan case accuses Trump of falsifying business records to cover up a sex scandal during his 2016 campaign. Trump has denied any wrongdoing. Now, Boeing will be in the spotlight today during back to back congressional hearings. Lawmakers are looking into possible major safety failures. The first session will feature members of an expert panel that found serious flaws in Boeing's safety culture. The main event will be a second hearing featuring a Boeing engineer who claims that sections of the skin on 787 Dreamliner jets are not properly fastened and could even break apart. The whistleblower's lawyer says Boeing has igno ignored the engineer's concerns and prevented him from talking to experts about fixing those defects. Well, now to the latest on the war in the Middle East. As ABC's Lionel Moise reports, new details about Israel's looming response to that attack from Iran over the weekend. This morning, ABC News has learned U.S. officials expect a limited response from Israel to that historic attack by Iran over the weekend. Israel's response, according to a senior U.S. official, is not expected in the next 48 hours, as Israel faces international pressure not to further escalate the conflict. ABC's Matt Gutman got an up-close look at an Iranian missile the size of a bus that was part of the attack late Saturday recovered from the Dead Sea. It is over 30 38 feet long, made out of steel, and right around here would have been the warhead, capable of carrying 800 pounds of high explosives. Israel's war cabinet meeting again while the war with Hamas rages on in Gaza. The U.N. now saying more than 10,000 women have been killed, leaving behind 19,000 orphans. U.S. aid to Israel is now front and center on Capitol Hill, but House Speaker Mike Johnson, after also proposing a separate measure for Ukraine war funding, is now facing criticism from conservatives in his party who oppose Ukraine aid. They're threatening to oust him as speaker. I am not resigning. Also on Capitol Hill, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton defending statements he made about pro-Palestinian protesters who blocked traffic in several big cities this week. Cotton telling people to take matters into your own hands to get them out of the way. Very worried about the diversion of police resources. If something like this happened in Arkansas on a bridge there, let's just say I think there'd be a lot of very wet criminals that have been tossed overboard, not by law enforcement, but by the people whose uh, road they're blocking. Cotton says he was not advocating for violence, but insisted protesters do not have the right to block traffic. 
Back overseas, more fallout from Iran's attack. The U.S. is expected to impose new sanctions against Iran in the coming days, including on its missile and drone program. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. We are now officially just hours away from the start of the Fiesta season. We are counting down to the first official Fiesta event, which is Fiesta Fiesta. It's at the Alamo Dome's HEB Plaza. Woohoo! Well, case at Metal <laughs> Days are back, and you can grab a free case at Metal at various locations across the San Antonio area. We have a brand new location for you to visit this morning, and we will reveal that location coming up later on GMSA. So KSET actually has five different kinds of medals for you to collect, including one for Texas Eats, SA Live, and more. So check out this story on KSET.com for the more details on which ones and the dates when you can get yours for free. And of course, KSET is truly your Fiesta station. We're hosting two special watch parties. Scan this QR code to get tickets right now for our Battle of Flowers party or the Fiesta Flambeau or both. If you want to be a KSAT Insider, it's easy and free to sign up. Insiders get early access along with so many more announcements and special events. It'll be fun. Time now, 510 and 73 degrees for now. Just ahead, how Amazon Music is using AI to give you the best playlists. Plus, a first look at Motorola's new Edge 50 phones and why it's reviving a special option for customers. And outside with live cam this morning, 73 degrees and sticky foggy and misty out there. Visibility not great there uh, as we look at this shot towards San Antonio International Airport on your Wednesday morning. 514 Amazon Music introducing a new feature that uses AI to create playlists. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon Music's Maestro, the new feature creates a playlist using artificial intelligence. You can make the playlist by entering a short string of text. For example, users can type in music for a rainy day. The feature is in testing right now. Next, a work hack for Instagram influencers. A New York Times report says a new program called Creator AI will cut their workload by having chatbot respond to fans. Most of the messages would reportedly be sent out automatically. Now, according to the Times, the messages will initially disclose that they are AI generated. Finally, Motorola is reviving the wooden back panel on its latest line of phones. The real wood design option will only be available for the Motorola Edge 50 Ultra. It will be available outside of the U.S. in the coming weeks, but Motorola says it is committed to expanding its availability. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. 515, 73 degrees. Let's look out there with TransGuide this morning. Looking over, it's kind of foggy on some of these pictures here. Looking through some of the shots there, I-37 at Loop 410. Things are moving, though. We're going to get a check-in with RJ Markins very soon. To me, Harlem is home. But home is also your body. Last one, everyone. I asked myself, why doesn't Pilates exist in Harlem? So, I started my own studio. Getting a brick and mortar in New York is not easy. Chase Inc. has supported us from Studio One to Studio Three. When you start small, you need some big help, and Chase Inc. was that for me. Earn up to 5% cash back on business essentials with the Chase Inc. Business Cash Card from Chase for Business. Make more of what's yours. Arthritis pain? We say not today. Tylenol 8-Hour Arthritis Pain has two layers of relief. The first is fast. The second is long-lasting. We give you your day back so you can give it everything. Tylenol, number one doctor recommended for arthritis pain. I would describe my mom as incredibly nurturing and encouraging. Truly my rock. The most authentic and real person. I am who I am because she is who she is. Diamonds for all mothers. Pandora, lab-grown diamonds. Just about 519 Wednesday morning. We made it to hump day, guys. Yes, we did. Oh, I'm going to make my entrance there. So. <laughs> yes, thanks, thanks for arriving. Yeah, there you go. Very right? nice. You're covering up the accident, which is perfect. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> or not accident. I'm not sure what it is. Well, day, I, I noticed you guys are actually more matching than anything. Yeah. I mean, I see the I know. I know. Back there, but. Yeah. You guys look awesome. Great minds think alike. So. It's the memo, I guess. <laughs> you guys kind of match, too. <laughs> I know. Grayish suits. Yeah, with the gray, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. But I got the good-looking um, one on my side. So. Aw, <laughs> too kind. 
<laughs> this guy. Okay. Uh, all right. Traffic authority check here. All right. So, uh, the, yeah, these flashing lights here. Okay. I saw those a little bit earlier, uh, when, but I was uh, blocking the uh, Transguide camera. This is actually our uh, construction going on here at 35 at Topper Wine. So, again, this is northbound lanes, and uh, you see that traffic is moving pretty good through the northbound part there of uh, 35 over by the Forum Live Oak, but the Pat Booker Road is uh, closed for the moment right now, and that's not the only construction we're seeing out there as we take a look here. 35 southbound, uh, we still have two main lanes that are going to be closed here uh, through at least the rest of this hour. They were supposed to pick things up around 6 o'clock this morning, but we will see if that is the case. Uh, this fog is causing, kind of causing a little bit of some issues out there for some of our construction crews, but either way, Pat Booker to Judson Road, two main lanes closed in that area. We still have a stall being reported here on Loop 410 northbound at I-35 for all of our folks coming in from the Palo Alto area as we take one more look outside with our trans guide camera show you a few more here because again the ongoing the fog is going to be a little bit an issue as folks make their way out and about on this uh, Wednesday morning. Okay, so we've been talking a lot about construction and unfortunately, yeah, we have a new round of it it's about to start on the far north side along 1604. All right, what you're seeing here is Techstop broke ground on segment four of the loop 1604 North expansion project, this massive project that I've been doing for years now, this work will be done from Highway 281 to Redland Road. So remember, the project is moving from west to east. It started a few years back on Bandera Road and is now in the middle of the work in the 1604 and I-10. That's been a major headache, but again, we are getting progress through here. So we asked TxDOT about that progress on the entire project. Phase one, if you kind of work your way from the west to the east, uh, phase one's about 70% complete from State Highway 16 to I-10. And then from uh, phase two and phase three are working their way. They're about 30% complete uh, along those projects. And then this phase will start. And again, it, you'll start seeing that sequentially finish up here in the next couple of years. And this 1604 project is going from two lanes in each direction to five lanes in each direction to accommodate the incredible growth. San Antonio is one of the fastest growing cities in the entire United States. Improvement. Yeah, we definitely know that uh, we are growing by leaps and bounds here. So construction on segment four right here begins this month and is expected to be complete by 2027. So again, this is the first work that's being done east of Highway 281. So all of our folks out there in the north side uh, that have not really had to deal with a lot of these traffic concerns, we're now getting that work headed your way uh, for the next couple of years or so. So it's a lot of work going on out there, Mike. <laughs> I know a lot of groaning, a lot of sign, but they are doing yeah. some major stuff out there. Cool animation, how it it you know was that is covering nice. up what's there yeah. with the new stuff. Too bad it doesn't work that fast now. Now if people would learn how to merge properly on these highways. <laughs> Anyways, did you see uh, I, in some of those transit cameras any damp roads out there? Some of them? Not yet. Uh, mostly just fog around the area. <laughs> yeah, Excuse me. Definitely misty out there. Okay. Yeah, we do have some mist out there. Beautiful view yesterday out there at Woodlawn Lake. Thank you very much, Mr. McClellan. You can see the fog out there. And yeah, it looks like there's a bit of a reflection off 410 over there by the airport with some of this mist. Three miles visibility there down to a half mile at Bernie. Three quarters of a mile Castorville. So the Fog is starting to thicken up somewhat, and then you head out 10, you're going to run into some of that fog as well. And then on top of that, we do have just a couple of light little uh, sprinkly showers that are moving up to the northeast, not really amounting to anything. You could almost call this some of that uh, that heavy mist or that heavy drizzle out there, but we will keep some of these showers around for the next couple of hours. Dew points have actually gone up. Yesterday it was very humid. It's even more humid, so that's why we have these dew points well up into the uh, low 70s around the area. So it is almost sort of wet towel kind of humidity when you step outside. We'll keep these uh, little sprinkly showers around, some of that mist and drizzle. Limited sunshine today. I mean, kind of like yesterday, it's going to be just little glimpses, I think, here and there. We it will still be very warm and humid around the area later on today with a high up to 85. All right, I want to show two different computer models that go into the forecast tomorrow. So we're going to be in the, during the day, have some sunshine out there. This particular model by seven o'clock does have a couple of cells trying to develop up there to the north, trying to scoot down to the south around Kerrville with a couple of scattered showers around here. Those would sort of be fizzling out and by tomorrow evening, even a couple of showers around here that will all kind of start to uh, die down as we go into early uh, Friday morning. Different computer model. This one keeps everything further up to the north 
throughout the evening hours tomorrow. And yeah, some of those uh, showers working the way in here. So again, it, it really depends on which computer model you look at. But one thing for sure, the rain chances are definitely lower for tomorrow. Still going to be on the lookout. Still not completely uh, out of the woods as far as rain is concerned. Storm Prediction Center. Remember yesterday, this was covering all of the area, the uh, the risk for severe storms. So this is now, it's been cut back, obviously, and just to include the uh, hill country for tomorrow. Now, jump further ahead, and I want to go into Saturday. Saturday is going to be the wet day, and especially we could be looking at some very hefty rain up here. Now, this is where some of the worst drought is up in the hill country. So this could be uh, pretty much a godsend as far as rain is concerned Saturday night. Now, now, granted, there may be too much rain in spots, but it looks like you're going to get a pretty good soaking up there to the north. Then we clear out nicely. We get this little bit of a front moving on through here, and that's going to clear us out for Sunday. And then Monday still looks fantastic for the river parade. Actually, it's still maybe a little leaning toward the coolish side as the sun goes down on Monday evening. But prior to that, plenty of humidity, and we'll just keep an eye on uh, some rain chances, albeit small, for tomorrow. A lot more after this. Stick around. Today in entertainment news, a look at a big screen movie, a streaming documentary, and music from preschoolers' favorite pig. I have an idea. <laughs> Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Bye. his name. I'd rather not say. To be guy. You're afraid to say his name because the guy's married. Or you're married. Or someone's married. He's married. I know he's married. I'm going to drive a cab 20 years and not know people. Dakota Johnson and Sean Penn get to know each other during a memorable cab ride in the official trailer for Daddy-O. The drama, written and directed by Christy Hall, opens in theaters June 28th. From the densest forests, to the deepest oceans, to the hottest deserts, everything is connected through the vast web of life. And Our Living World shows us how. The docuseries looks at the network of connections linking all life on Earth. Our Living World, narrated by Kate Blanchett, debuts today on Netflix. It's Peppa Pig's first ever cover song. The Queen of Preschool's version of Katy Perry's Roar is now available on digital streaming platforms. If you can't find it, your kids will help you. And you're In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That's kind of cute. It is very cute. Aw. Time now, 529 and 73 degrees for now. Talk about a jump at the pump. Gas prices went up yesterday at most locations. Up next, how much prices are expected to increase as we get closer to Memorial Day. Good morning to you. It's Wednesday, the 17th of April. Yes, we hope you had a good week so far. A little foggy and a little humid this morning. Yeah, uh, even more fog than what we had yesterday at this time. And humidity, there's more of it as well. We even have a couple of showers out there. This is the camera over there at 10 at 410. Now, granted, this is on top of a building right there, right around the... Uh, it was at Callahan right there at uh, at 10, but yeah, looking, you know, the intersection is the interchange is right there. But we do have obviously the low clouds and as well as uh, some of the fog reduced visibility around the area right now. 73 degrees, about the same temperature as yesterday, but that number dew point is up a good four or five degrees compared to yesterday. You get 72, you're really noticing the humidity for with dew points of 72 and you know, in my book, when you hit about 74 or so, that's like that wet towel sort of humidity. So we're on the verge of that this morning. And we do, like I said, have a couple of light little showers around the area. This is the, uh, the radar out of Corpus Christi. So this is uh, just some clutter right here. But here's some of these showers. A few of them on the, uh, the northwest side of town and uh, out in the hill country. A couple of more further on down to the southwest. Not amounting to anything, but just that sort of nuisance stuff out there. And then on top of that, obviously, there is some some missed and reduced visibilities. These numbers have been dropping somewhat over the past hour, two hours, mile and three quarters there at Gonzales, uh, three quarters of a mile right now at Gonzales and just a half mile Bernie stage. And these numbers even have been dropping down in past half hour, 45 minutes. So we'll have to watch out for some of those thicker spots with the fog. More 70s than 60s on the map right now. Again, normal low is 58 here in town. 
And with all this, uh, with these dew points in the 70s, temperatures aren't going anywhere this morning. Definitely they're not dropping down at all. Mold is moderate. Oh, looks like we are finally in the, the waning days of oak season. Thank goodness out there. Pecan and grass also on the low side. Plenty of clouds, hot and humid today. Sunshine is really going to be at a premium, if at all. And then we go into tomorrow. Now, 90, hot and humid. Upper 80s Friday, very sultry in the evening. Yes, there is a chance for a shower storm. Most of that, though, I think it's going to be staying further up to the north for Fiesta Fiesta tomorrow evening. Maybe a shower on Friday. Not really great rain chances, but then we get into Saturday and that's the rain. That's the day I should say for some rain showers and storms, maybe even some heavy downpours, especially north of San Antonio up in portions of the hill country where you have some of some of the worst drought around here, so that's going to be very welcome. Then we clear out in behind that for Sunday and the river parade looks very nice. We're going to have partly cloudy skies and actually kind of a coolish evening Monday evening, so that's looking very promising. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority, what's going on, RJ? All right, Mike, yeah, you mentioned it earlier, the fog. Uh, definitely see that out there from a lot of our TransGuide traffic cameras. As we take a look here at one of our cameras on the northeast side of town, 35 at Judson, so a couple things here. We're still dealing with some overnight construction in this area as you take a look. So the traffic going away from us, that's our northbound drivers, the traffic coming in our direction, that's our southbound drivers, and we still have a little bit of a closure in place there, but you do see some of the heavy fog in our area. We'll talk about some of those uh, construction here in just a little bit. Just want to show you a couple more cameras here throughout the rest of our areas. We take a look there at 35 at Topper Wine. We have reopened that Pat Booker exit, but you could just see the amount of fog that we're seeing here in parts of the town. 37 right there at the Alamo Dome. So construction going on here. Pat Booker to Judson Road. This is going to be southbound 35. We have two main lanes closed now, as you just saw from the camera shot a little while ago. We are still seeing traffic drive through there pretty well, and that's an indication of what we're seeing on our maps at the moment as well. As we head you out to the southwest side now, uh, loop 410 northbound at 35 still seeing a stalled vehicle out there but uh, just check the camera out there a little while ago it looks like this is clearing up there as well so we just need our maps to kind of update us on that situation there and on the far east side of town we still have this vehicle fire that was reported on the I-10 westbound frontage road right there at FM 1518 for all of our folks in the Zool, Santa Clara area, maybe making their way in from the Seguin area into 1604 and the uh, far east side now of San Antonio. So one more quick look here at our TransGuide traffic cameras. You just see again here a lot of heavy fog throughout the area. Make sure that you give yourself a little bit more time if you're about to step outside right now. Mark and Stephanie, back to you. Thank you, RJ. Do you recognize this person? This is the man Bear County Sheriff's deputies think stole several items from a Medina County patrol car that was left unlocked. Among those stolen items, a badge, bulletproof vest, and an AR-15. The car burglary happened in far west Bear County on Field Sparrow. Surveillance cameras caught the suspect trying to use the deputy's credit card at a quick trip convenience store in the Five Palms area. If you know who this person is, call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. Well, it's April, and that means it's testing season for public schools across the state. Well, last week, many school districts started administering the State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness Test, also known as the STAR Test. And as our Patty Santos tells us, it can be a tough time for students as they continue testing this week. Test anxiety is a real thing, and it can hinder some people from being able to perform well on a test, even though they know the material. We spoke with the principal at Ellison Elementary School in Northside ISD, and she says it's really important for families to help hype up their kids' confidence. Kids and teachers have put in a lot of work all year long teaching and learning what's going to be on the test. And she tells her students the test is really a celebration of what they know. Which is every day, is making sure kids uh, you know, get enough sleep, that they're eating well, that they're feeling good about themselves. And that's not just for a STAR test. It's like I said, for every day that they're coming to school um, with a positive attitude, with a positive approach, uh, that they're feeling good about themselves. She says, don't tell the kids that they have to reach a certain score or perform a certain way simply to try their best. And the kids will be testing in reading, writing and math over the next three weeks. Star test is giving to kids from third grade through 12th and the results will be handed out sometime later in the summer. For GMSA, I'm Patty Santos.
USAA laying off more people. The San Antonio-based company letting 220 people go, citing quote-unquote changing business needs. However, the company says it will continue to hire people for other positions. Right now, it's unclear how the layoffs affected our local USAA offices. Last year, the insurance giant eliminated almost 1,000 jobs. And in back in May, cut 300. It's the first time in its 100-year history USAA posted losses on its annual balance sheet last year. SeaWorld San Antonio is looking for help and it's holding a job fair to fill tons of positions. So the park is looking for full-time and part-time employees. The job fair is scheduled for 3 to 7 p.m. Now this is happening both tomorrow and Friday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturday at the SeaWorld Human Resources Center. So if you are interested, go ahead and apply ahead of time. Before you go, we have a link to help you with all of that on our website at kset.com. KSAT Metal Days are back. You can grab a free KSAT Metal at various locations across the San Antonio area. That's right. So we have a brand new location for you to visit this morning, and we will reveal that location, we promise, coming up later this morning on Good Morning San Antonio. KSAT actually has five different kinds of medals for you to collect this year, so you can check out this story on KSAT.com for more details. And of course, KSAT is your Fiesta station. We're hosting two special parties. Their watch parties. Scan this QR code to get tickets right now to our Battle of Flowers party or the Fiesta Flambeau or both. If you want to be a KSAT insider, it's easy to do and it's free, but not necessary to buy tickets. Insiders get a little bit earlier access along with many more announcements of our special events. And happening today, Metro Health is hosting Fiesta de la Salud. It's an annual event that's all about providing health resources for our community. There will be a vaccine clinic, free uh, HIV testing, along with food, games, and prizes. It's happening from 3 to 7 p.m. today at Crockett Park. Time now, 541, 73 degrees. The gas prices are going up yet again. And coming up next, why we're seeing the latest jump at the pump. Outside with live cam. See how things are looking out there right now. Don't be surprised if there's some uh, mist on the windshield this morning. So hard to see much of anything with this camera. We do have fog and mist in a large portion of the KSAP viewing area on this early Wednesday morning. If you drive past a gas station or drove past one yesterday, you may have done a bit of a double take. You'll likely pay more now than you have seen in months. Well, 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz tells us why you can expect more price increases. Talk about a jump at the pump. Just yesterday, the gas was $2.94. And now? $3.39. Margaret Garcia's cross down Aaron just got more expensive. And how does that impact you? Uh, rough. It really is. Local gas prices climbed 28 cents a gallon in the past month, 15 cents since Monday. That's an average. Like a lot of stations, this one jumped 45 cents overnight, meaning folks filling up today are paying $7 more a tank than just yesterday. Some drivers wondered if the Iran-Israel conflict is why. Not so much. Gas Buddy's chief oil analyst Patrick DeHaan says it's had no real effect yet. But keep an eye on the Middle East. It's been a powder keg in the past for uh, pushing oil prices up. Instead, he says it's a seasonal rise. Refineries doing maintenance and more people are hitting the road. And that has the gas pump numbers on a roll. Look, this truck just got a $135 drink. But for some drivers, it means making adjustments. When I only put 20, $25 in, I'm not going to fill it up. because 25 is your limit today? Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's way up higher than I planned. So I have to adjust a few of my errands today to... How about that? DeHan says expect prices to go up another dime or so until Memorial Day and then easing up in June. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Well, the time now is 546 and 73 degrees for now. Let's take a peek out there with Transguide right now if you're headed out the door. If everybody does what they're supposed to do using their, uh, you know, their, their traffic lights and slowing down, paying extra attention to people around you, we should be okay because we have fog and mist in the area. Please be careful. RJ will have a live update straight ahead. 
549 right now. Happy Wednesday to everyone out there and things uh, looking pretty good in terms of traffic out there. If you're about to hit the roads uh, with the exception of just this fog and mist that we're seeing on a lot of our trans guide cameras as we look here 1604 you see fog in the area there as a couple of cars getting through there 1604 Spurs Ranch Road same situation there as well. A couple different incidents to let you know about right now. We have a car fire. This is being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. This is on Medical Drive off of uh, I-10 westbound, so not on the major part of the highway, but uh, it might run into some issues there for our drivers on the northwest side. Again, car fire, medical drive off of I-10 West being reported by the fire department. And we still have this stalled vehicle being reported Loop 410 northbound at uh, I-35 for all of our folks coming in from uh, 410 North to the Palo Alto area and in this main intersection right there. Rest of the city, everything else is looking again pretty good for the most part. Have not seen any major accidents or delays to let you know about, but we do expect things to get a little bit busier as we get closer to our six o'clock hour. One more quick look here at the trans guy cameras. 35 at Topper Wine. We saw we have reopened Pat Booker, that exit there. And again, 37 Alamo Dome, uh, seeing some heavy fog in that area. Make sure to give yourself some more time, some more space, and use those low beam uh, lights there. Never use the high beam lights, because uh, that can cause a glare for other folks out there. So just a couple of different safety tips when you're out there in the fog. Okay, here we go. We'll see how it goes yep. this morning. Yeah, guys. Also a glare for you, because, I mean, they're yes. just going to sit there and reflect off the, the little water particles in the air right there. So, all right, question about this picture. Was this intentional, or did somebody get into something they shouldn't have? Mm. With uh, all the little ribbons. I look, you know what? Um, I would say intentional because I, I recognize that as a flower crown, and it looks yeah. like they made it smaller. Agreed. Oh, to, okay. Yeah, that's that's just. Well, Miss Bean looks looks very. Fun. Yeah, ready for fiesta. Yes, great picture. All right, this is our camera down there at Brook City Base, looking up to the north. So somewhere in there is the the skyline. I mean, I can't even. That may be the dome right there. Uh, yeah, a lot of low clouds, a lot of fog hanging around here. Visibility is uh, down to one mile now out at the airport. Same thing, Castroville, Port SA, a lot of fog. Randolph, Bernie's still at a half mile and five miles up there in Kerrville. So it is going to continue to get thicker, but then, you know, as is typical with fog, you drive not too far and then nothing or in the opposite direction, you drive not too far and you're going to run into all of that fog and low clouds out there. A little bit of light rain is being picked up on radar and then What's not being picked up, of course, is all of the uh, the mist that's falling as well. So we do have a few of these uh, detectable showers there on the north side, uh, 281 near 1604. But again, there's a lot of that mist hanging around here, which really doesn't get picked up too awfully much. Dew points are up four or five degrees compared to yesterday. Notice how they're down 27 degrees in Ozona compared to what it was yesterday. We had that little bit of a dry line that uh, had moved on through, didn't obviously come through the rest of the area. We'll keep some of these light little sprinkly showers around this morning, make it up to 76 at noon, maybe a couple of peaks of sunshine. Maybe I kind of doubt that 85 for a high temperature later on today, perhaps a sprinkly shower. I mean, I kind of doubt it. So here's the computer model. And again, this is the one which and I, more models are leaning this direction as far as tomorrow is concerned, where the rain is going to be staying further up to the north. There may be some of those stronger storms up there, but throughout Fiesta Fiesta uh, festivities there, tomorrow evening, it is looking, you know, fingers crossed, looking rain free. There may be a couple of showers here and there, but most all of the, uh, the stronger storms would be staying further up there to the north. Also, this area that Storm Prediction Center had for the risk for severe weather has now, remember it was covering most of the area, has been moved back just to include the hill country, and that's going to be tomorrow. Friday, about the same situation. Then we get into Saturday. This front's going to work its way across here, and especially in the late morning afternoon hours, we'll have some rain in the morning. And then this is all going to start to really increase as far as the rain, showers, thunderstorms, maybe some heavy downpours as well overnight into early Sunday. And primarily, we'll get some good showers here, but primarily just north of San Antonio up in parts of the hill country. Then we clear out really nicely. Uh, still some clouds hanging around here, but cooler temperatures, drier air for late Sunday, as well as Battle of Flowers. More after this. Good morning. It is great to be with you here on a Wednesday. We are following the latest on former President Trump's criminal trial here in New York. Seven jurors have been seated. We're going to tell you when the opening statements could get underway. 
Also, the key deadline for the suspect in the Idaho student murders and what it could mean for the trial. And Shark Tank star Robert Herjavec is here answering your questions about fighting inflation and what small businesses can do. You'll see it all on GMA. And in the next hour of GMSA, San Antonio went big on Selena Day. How different parts of the city celebrated the Queen of Tejano. Plus, we're one day away from Fiesta Fiesta. How you can get ready before everything kicks off tomorrow over at the Alamo Dome here in San Antonio as the party gets going. And checking Transguide, if you're headed out the door right now as we approach the bottom of the top of the hour, rather, we do have fog and mist on almost every single Transguide camera around the city. We're going to keep you informed in our next hour.